On this episode of Still Loading, take a shot for the word heart. Or oh. darkness. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Still Loading. This episode is another episode within the summer of PlayStation 2, and we are talking about Kingdom Hearts 2 today. Uh, You may remember a while ago I did an episode on the original Kingdom Hearts with my friend Sarah. She was unable to come back for this one, but with me today, first-time guest on the show. Uh, Her husband has been on numerous times, but first-time guest on... Well, technically, you were on kind of before. You did some voice work for me. I did, for the... Driana. Hi, Driana here. Hello, everyone. Uh, Thank you for coming on to the podcast today. Uh, And yes, so you were on once before. You were on the Still Loading Storytime episode. You and and Andrew actually did a ton of work on that just because I I sent you a bunch of video game manuals Mm -hmm. over email and you... I remember you guys said you went out to your car because it was like <laughs> more padded. Yep. It was easier to get a better audio, uh, clear audio in. And you guys just went crazy with it. We sure did. It was in our car in the middle of, I think, the winter, just like <laughs> windows up, cell phone in hand. <laughs> and the only thing I remembered was uh, Barbie. <laughs> Yes, you did a Barbie one, and also, oh my god, I have, I don't remember them all. You did, you sent me like eight or nine of them, yep. though. It was great. Uh, but I have you on for Kingdom Hearts 2 because you requested it, and I'm actually happy you requested it because I've been wanting to do Kingdom Hearts 2 for a while now, and I was actually going to try to make this like a big episode, have you and Sarah on it, but like I said, Sarah couldn't make it this time, mainly because, unfortunately, COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. But um, we're going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 2 today, so... But before we dive into that, what I've been asking everyone is what is your earliest memory of the PlayStation 2 or when did you first experience uh, or, or when did you first get a PlayStation 2? Um, First of all, just correct me real quick. What year did it come out? 2000. 2000. That's why it's the 20th anniversary of PlayStation 2. Okay, so it came out in 2000. So I think my first memory was probably, I'm going to say 2002? 2002. I think that sounds about right. Okay. Um, by then, there's probably more games available to. I think the first Kingdom Hearts came out in 2002 as well. well so there you, go. Yeah. you might have had it. That's you might have been able to why. get that then. Yeah. So my earliest memory of uh, the PlayStation 2 um, was not mine. It was my stepbrother's. He got it for okay. Christmas, and I got to have the benefit of being around him and playing it and things like that. And um, yeah, like uh, I remember just like some racing games and just like lots of wrestling games um kingdom hearts didn't come till a few years later for me though were you into any of those early games or was it just kind of like oh that's stuff my brother plays and and or did you get into it because your brother played it i think it was mostly like a little bit of envy like i you have shiny new system i want to play as well um it was probably mostly that i don't think it was so much um in that time that the video games hooked me it was just shiny new toy and like to throw my age out there a little bit like in 2001 2002 i was in the first grade so i was a child i keep forgetting you're younger than me by a number of years uh so all right that's awesome though that i I, i've said before i got it i got it for christmas one year but didn't know i'm going to paraphrase it because i said it the first episode but we got a dvd for christmas and i was like oh that's cool and i didn't think anything of it and my mom's like no look at that and i go yeah it's a dvd wait a minute because we didn't have a dvd player at the time and you know it doubled down on it so it doubled down as a ps2 or a dvd player and a video game machine so that's how i got mine but so what made you pick kingdom hearts i would assume like describe your your because we were talking off mic about it you have a very love-hate relationship with the series oh my god so what made you pick kingdom hearts 2 i guess would you have picked kingdom hearts 2 over one one was off the table because i covered it before but if you had the choice would you have picked one over two or Hmm. would you have stayed with this one here that's hard to say i think i might choose two over one okay for many reasons um one was very much just like the first one getting their feet wet making a story like building the establishment of the uh story and plot and then two just build it off of that and 
there was a huge demand for like we need to know what happens because like it had a huge huge following i mean the first game ended almost on a cliffhanger kind because of, riku <laughs> <Almost>. <laughs> uh, well it di- well it did right because i think if i remember correctly the end of the first game riku ends up behind the door of kingdom mm-hmm. hearts and sora Rik- sora and riku are separated i believe it's yep. king mickey and riku on one side of the door correct. and then sora donald and goofy on the other side yes. correct? correct okay correct the it's funny that you said that uh the first one's a cliffhanger because admittedly the whole series is a cliffhanger (laughs) you're not wrong like so this is where i get into the love-hate relationship with kingdom hearts like one is great because it's like oh we really want to know what happens and we think two is going to answer those questions ha of all things it created five more questions and maybe answered a half a question that you didn't even care about now, when you first played this, were you one of those people like me who didn't play Chain of Memories? Um, so, gosh, the chronological order of me playing is haphazard and crazy. Mine's so. the same way. Like, uh, sorry not to cut you off. I was just going to say, like, I didn't play Chain of Memories because it was on the handheld console. So I figured, all right, that's not one of the main games in the series. So why would I play that first before Kingdom Hearts 2? I know mm-hmm. I didn't know at the time that it came out before Kingdom Hearts 2. And then you find out years later, you kind of need to know Chain of Memories mm-hmm. to understand what the fuck's happening at the beginning beginning of two. Yeah, so with me, I uh, beat one, I think with my cousin. I don't exactly remember who I beat that game with, but okay. I, I beat one at some point in my lifetime. And then um, I actually did play Chain of Memories on the handheld. Okay. I did. Like, it was, again, a cousin's there's a theme here i don't own my own video games i just go over other people's i didn't i didn't own any games until i was like 10 like i know you're sitting in my collection right now but like Mm -hmm. that i didn't start that to like years ago okay so chain i was like you sorry uh game boy advance came out in 2004 so i think Mm -hmm. my cousin got it like right away and like because i was a kingdom hearts junkie at that point because i was hooked i was like i need it and then i i definitely did play it but when i was younger I I don't know if it's ADHD or what's going on in my brain, but I didn't like to read dialogue. I liked to just play games. (laughs) You know, no story, just all (laughs) gameplay. So like it it depends. Like with Kingdom Hearts, there's like cutscenes and voice acting and like some of the things I want to read. But for some reason, Chain of Memories in 2004, I was in the fourth grade. I should have been reading it. I was not. I just it wasn't voice acted and it wasn't what I was used to. So I was just kind of like. Yeah, I'm just going to skip all this and just go to the action. Now, did you like Chain of Memories, though? No. Thank you. Absolutely that not. That is the correct opinion. <laughs> I got really far in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories on the Advance up to, I don't know who's listening, who's played act, the actual Game Boy Advance version, but um, like the like maybe the second Riku battle. And I would argue that Riku's probably one of the hardest bosses in Kingdom Hearts like throughout the all of the oh my series. god yeah even the, the first game hard. too so like i got stuck in the game boy advance version and just stopped so like by all means i had some story in some context but little did i know that that had anything to do with the actual overarching story of the whole entire series i thought it was a one shot it, I mean, you wouldn't be wrong for thinking that at the time. I mean, if you would have paid attention to the story, maybe not. But like, I, like, for those who don't know, the story of Chain of Memories is pretty much Sora gets lured into this castle called the Castle of Illusion, I believe is the name of it. Um, and he gets stripped of all his memories. And so at the end of the game, he has to he's placed into like a hibern like a like a like a I can't think of the word a cryostasis mm-hmm. pod. And he has to spend a certain amount of time getting his memories put back together by a character named Diz, which I don't know if he's even Diz is even introduced in in uh, Chain of Memories. Yeah, I know he's in Kingdom Hearts too. Actually, um, Naminé is the one that puts his memories back together. Is Naminé okay? It's Naminé. Diz does have a part in it, but she's that's why they call her like a witch. Like ah, she's a witch. She can. Yes, because she's the memories. one that took his memories in the first place. She feels she has a change of heart. Well, she was actually being manipulated the whole time. Yeah, they. She was their pawn. She, she um. So in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, like these new big baddies appear. It's no longer just the heartless are the bad guys. It's now this organization 13 Ooh. which is like honestly i think is a really cool addition to the to the world of kingdom hearts i think organization 13 is really is a really cool concept and i like the whole concept of 
excuse me, of nobodies, which you learn about in Kingdom Hearts yes. 2. All of that is very interesting, but they just made it so convoluted. Oh. So with Chain of Memories, um, whichever version you decide to play, um, uh, Organization 13 appears. They're the new big baddies. They all wear these dark black hoodies and it's like like the akatsuki from or uh from naruto is it akatsuki right yeah akatsuki okay yeah from naruto yeah (laughs) and that creates like such an like interesting like appeal like who are these guys Mm -hmm. and but by like the 10th game you play of kingdom hearts of all the expansions like at this point you're like just show me who it is i don't care who's under the hood anymore like it was cool the first couple games like ooh, who's under the hood now it's like just annoying like when a mystery lasts too long and then you're just kind of fed up with it. Yep. I always loved, um, there was, I forget where it was. It was some, tr- like some Twitter post I saw, but someone said, if you could describe Kingdom Hearts in like a sentence or less, and it's like Kingdom Hearts 3 is the 10th game in the series or yes. something like that. Yep. And it's, it's so true because w- when you start at Kingdom Hearts 2 to bring it into Kingdom Hearts 2, the game starts where you're not playing a sword as all. At all, you're, you're playing, playing as Roxas. you're playing as Roxas, who is Jesse McCartney, by the way. That's who it was. I couldn't. We were talking about that off mic. I couldn't. I didn't know that was Jesse McCartney. And yeah. then Haley Joel Osment is Sora. Yes. I is he through in the whole series? I don't know if he's the voice of Sora in Halo or Halo Three. I don't know why I said that in Kingdom Hearts Three. I believe so. I would have to wiki check that, but I'm pretty sure he's all around because like he started young and yeah. like literally as he got older and the voice got deeper. Sora so did also Sora did too. Got deeper, which was pretty consistent and nice. And he was at least he's definitely Sora in this game. That that I know. Mm-hmm. But uh so you, you don't play you're not you don't start a, a you don't start out as Sora as, at all. Mm-mm. So you're if you didn't play Chain of Memories Which a lot of people didn't, which did a huge injustice to the second game. So a lot of people just, you know, they know numbers, what comes after one, two, mm-hmm. not one and a half. So, and it wasn't even called one and a half. It wasn't even called one and a half. It was called Chain of Memories. So no one played that. And then you jump right into two. And like we're like, okay, we're a new character. That's fine. But eventually we'll find out why we're this character. Why do you keep seeing flashbacks of Sora in a pod? That, yeah. You, who knows? Who knows? So now, fun fact. I, I'm, We can go back a little bit. But I beat Kingdom Hearts 2. And around that time period, there was a Kingdom Hearts manga I've seen that, actually. Yes. I used to work at a public library, and they had issues of it. So I did a little backpedaling, because like, I beat two, and I was like, what was the whole first part of Kingdom Hearts 2 about? And my biggest question was like, why the heck did I only fight half of the organization? And then me and my small brain didn't think, oh, that small game had the other half of the organization members. Mm-hmm. And like... If you read Jiminy's journal in Kingdom Hearts 2 at any given time, like you'd look up people like Marluxia or uh, I can't remember any of the other names. One of the other 13 people. Yeah, it'll say like deceased or like, oh, like not dead because they couldn't use that. Or no, uh, whereabouts unknown or something something like like that. that. Basically, like they're dead. And, you know, playing 2, you're like, I didn't fight them. But you did. But you did. It just didn't know it. Yeah. It's just, it's bad. It was bad at the time. Now fans are savvy enough to know like there's no such thing as a non-canon Kingdom Hearts game, with the mm-hmm. exception I would say of Recoded is the closest. Yeah. Um, which do you know anything about Recoded? I haven't I played com- it. I I've played every single Kingdom Hearts game except Coded. Well, you didn't. It's I, about Jiminy's journal. I know that much. And it was yeah. originally phone games in Japan. Yep. It was an episodic phone. I think that's a, such a cool thing. We never got shit like that in the nope. U.S. Which is, I mean, we didn't have fancy phones like the Japanese did back in like the mid two thousands. Now we're getting caught up, but yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so two, two. The game is just so confusing because, like we said, you start out playing as Roxas in Twilight Town, if yes, I remember correctly. Twilight Town. Uh, and Twilight Town, he's just kind of the beginning of the game starts out slow, just like the first Kingdom Hearts. But the first Kingdom Hearts slow section, would you say, is what half an hour to an hour? This is like at least three hours. Yes at least three to four hours of just doing random mini games and just running around and like creating like this like little mini story almost only to abruptly stop and then jump right back to Sora. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh, there he is. Why is he in a pod? Why is he bigger? Why does his clothes not fit? And why is what? Like it just, I feel so bad for Roxas because Mm -hmm. Roxas. So 
actually we'll explain who Roxas is in a second. Let's do actually let's do that right now. Let's kind of explain the biggest like I shouldn't say the biggest one of the big re- revelations in the in this game. You learn what nobodies are. Yes. Do you learn nobodies in Chain of Memories? Do you know? I don't. I think, I think there was a small like it wasn't as much like um, in Kingdom Hearts two where there's a whole bunch of them. I think there was like one or two introduced okay because um it was like the, it was supposed to be the slow introduction to two uh kingdom hearts 2 so there was no bodies but not to the degree of kingdom hearts 2 okay so yeah w- when you lose your heart become a heartless you become a heartless take a shot <laughs> look, 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 look um you become a heartless and if any heartless is ever created that also creates a nobody well i think it's if someone's heart is strong enough right i believe if if nope. is it every every Anything. single person that's th- why you fight the little like common nobodies uh, versus yeah, 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 organization yeah. 13 you become a um like a humanoid nobody if you have a strong heart that's why roxas exists because sora, has, sora a has a strong, strong heart. heart if sora was just a in peace, Which, random spoiler NPC alert, character. Roxas is Sora's nobody. We didn't talk about uh, I mean, whoops. It's okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, but that, I like what we were saying before, I think that's a really cool idea of the fact that when, what, it's almost like it takes, if you lose your heart, what's left over, like the shell of who you the were, shell of the person. is that's what a nobody. Is. Yep. And it's, it's a really cool concept, like, especially literally, but it, li- literarily, uh, the literary concept mm-hmm. of it, but, what was weird about Roxas and Sora is that Sora came back to life, mm-hmm. but it still left Roxas as a nobody. And I believe what 358 over 2 mm-hmm. explores all of Roxas's adventures up until he gets synced back up with Sora at the beginning, being, beginning excuse me, of Kingdom Hearts 2. Yes. So um, that is all correct. And if a nobody ever gets a heart again, they become... <laughs> This is canon. Uh, somebody again. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten to any the, the game where they explain. Which game do, does that explain? In? Oh, God, who knows? Um, okay, fair enough. I mean, it's uh, one of them. <laughs> and it's funny. You may think we're jumping all around and we we kind of are. But the reality of it is, is that this series has such a convoluted storyline. <laughs> and Kingdom Hearts 2 is where it really makes it convoluted this is this is the beginning of the branching paths pretty much or yes. what because chain of memories it's a pretty well self-contained story like if if even if you don't know that organization 13 are nobodies you don't need to know that for for chain of memories because yeah, the only goal in that game is sore lost his memories get them back exactly simple sweet to the point wonderful we love it that's all we got and that's all you need. That's and then all you need. in Kingdom Hearts 2, oh God. they explain, okay, the, this is where nobody's come from. Cool idea. But then it, because Sora can exist at the same time as Roxas, and Roxas and Sora get merged back together, and it's all this other crazy stuff, like it just creates all these things where it's like, well, then what would, ha- like, can other people come back from being a heartless? Like, get their hearts back, and then their nobody is just there. You know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. No. Um, plus the fact that the main plot of Kingdom Hearts is a, a lot of times the bad guys want to control Kingdom Hearts. The the place, the, the idea of all the hearts of the universe. The energy of Kingdom Hearts. Yes, they want to hone it and be bad guys and use it for their evil villainous ways. That is the, the and the bad guy, I mean the, the good guys have to stop them. That mm-hmm. is the plot. That is the, that's it. But they add so many things in between to get to those points. Yep. What would you say is... So, actually, you know what? I was going to ask about the gameplay, but let's stick to the story for now for Kingdom Hearts 2. Because we, we've been branching out into other games because, like Much we've like said... Much the, like the games, they do that too. <laughs> and you, the other games are all meant to... I feel like the majority of the other games are meant to answer the questions that Kingdom Hearts didn't answer mm-hmm, exactly kingdom hearts 2 excuse me didn't answer exactly like it should be a linear path but like it's not mm-hmm. a lot of times like they create questions but then they hit you with like okay play this prequel to answer kind of some questions that'll prepare you for like the one and a half game or the three quarter game or the just so much so like the let me see if i can get this right the chronological 
story order of Kingdom Hearts is Birth by Sleep, right? Birth by Sleep. Well, no, there's a mobile game that takes place before sorry, that. Oh, yep, apparently. sorry. Union X <laughs> Cross Key, whatever it is, that whatever. mobile phone game. Sorry, yes, Union Union X, Birth by Sleep, Birth by Sleep Two, the Aqua little mini game. Um, oh, okay, that one. One. I'm hesitating because I'm like I really don't want to screw this up. One. I can look it up if you want to be one and a half, which is Chain of Memories. 356 over half days because that takes place at the be- if you're going about the, the, the game, game store yeah oh, it's the original ds right yep the yeah. ds game Te- like 358 over two starts where Sora becomes a heartless in kingdom hearts one and mm-hmm. ends where roxas and Sora get reunited at the beginning of kingdom yeah you hearts start off two. with roxas just being like a shell of a thing and not having any personality or nothing and then it develops the relationship between like him axel and Shion. <laughs> not gonna get into that yet i haven't um, even i've started playing that game i have not beaten it so that so it, it explains like why in two why x was like we're friends and like we are so that and then it's technically in between then coded i'd like to say two is next um and then at 1.3 <laughs> well there and then uh dream drop distance oh, shit, I forgot about dream drop and distance. then 2.8 uh, the 2.8 thing or whatever dream drop 2.8 is usually just like a combination of like a remaster of like well no no though that was the 2.5 but 2.8 was an actual like pro pr- prologue to three i thought that was had more to do with union x Maybe I'm wrong with that then. I'd have to check. Yeah, sorry. I forgot about Dream Drop Distance. Dream Drop Distance before three, jumping at three. <laughs> God. And it's, but like I was saying before, Kingdom Hearts 3 is the 10th game in the series. Yes. It's so just, even though I said all that in chronological order, that's the story order, that's not how the games came out at all. Imagine being a young, you know, however old you are at fourth grade. For me, I'm like, okay, one, after one comes two. Crap. I mean, one and a half. I mean, three three quarters. I mean, okay, prequel. I mean, <laughs> I got to jump all around. Like, it's so many hoops to and, just understand the game. And even that mobile game that we were talking about that's, like, the earliest in terms of the story's chronology or whatever mm-hmm. didn't come out to like, four years ago. Nope. So... You didn't. The original game came out like what oh two oh three or whatever, and so you're talking twelve years later. You finally have something that took two games place prior. Mm-hmm. Like that's a it's a prequel of a prequel. And the sad thing is, it didn't really answer anything. It gave you more questions for like the new big baddie that happens after three, or okay. like I still haven't played three, so that's... I'm not gonna just just. There's, I, there's several big baddies, and usually they're probably all the same person. With how and, and all stemming from who the big baddie is in this game in Kingdom Hearts Two to kind of bring it all back mm-hmm. to all stemming from the big baddie in Kingdom Hearts Two, I believe, correct? Mm-hmm. So after Roxas and Sora get connected again, mm-hmm. they are pretty much tasked with going out on an adventure. At that point, I don't, mm-hmm. I forget what the inciting incident though is. I guess that the nobodies are tracking them. They have to look into more about Organization Thirteen. So in Kingdom Hearts One, your Sora is like, ah, oh, you're the Keyblade uh, wielder. You're the only one. <laughs> Lol, what a joke that was. And he had to unlock the keyholes of the world or didn't he lock the hearts of the keyholes of no, in he the had original to unlock them i thought he had to lock and them then he in had the to first lock one. them in two wait i might be thinking i might be having it wrong in one game you have to lock them and then the other game you have to unlock them i'm pretty sure you have to lock them in the first one because the heartless are trying to get to the hearts of the world so he's locking the He's locking those worlds' hearts so that way the heartless doesn't get them. See, I thought they were unlocking them because the they were talking about how the worlds were scattered and not connected anymore. And yeah. Sora w- was given the task of connecting the worlds, and it had something to do with the keyhole and the keyblade. I want to see if I can. It's hard to read on the plot thing. I'm going to look that up, but um, I do know for a fact that he was he was um given the task of bridging the worlds again because he were, was yeah th- that was that is correct. Whether it be locking the key or unlocking the key, who knows? Because <laughs> the game doesn't, the series doesn't make any sense. And to not necessarily stop Heartless, but like make them less available. Because there wasn't like that many Heartless around in these worlds, and then suddenly they were, and then Sora is going around like taking them back to where they go. So, like, when you kill a Heartless, their hearts return to Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. So. See, I'm not even saying that with full confidence, and I've played almost all the games. 
Yeah, so he's locking them in the first one because he goes. He's traveling to various worlds and keyholes in the worlds that, when sealed, prevent the heart of those worlds from being consumed by the heartless. Okay. So that's the first one. But you're second right. One, in the second one, he, he has to unlock them. them all. So what's the point? Uh, who knows? So yeah, the second one, he you know after they get all warped back together, he reconnects with Donald and Goofy and they have to travel to a bunch of different worlds to resolve the problems that organization 13 has started, has mm-hmm. caused and that the heartless has also caused. And then they also add in a third wheel on this because Maleficent didn't actually die at the end of the first game. Mm-hmm. And she's back and you meet a new villain, which is like the most unscary, like un intimidating villain ever. Pete. Mm-hmm. I can't be scared by Pete. I, I can honestly can't tell you what Maleficent even wants in Kingdom Hearts. I don't like, know either. They create, I feel like they create too many problems or too many baddies that, and not prioritize one over the other. Because at first, like, it was like, Maleficent's bad. Stop her. But also organization. And then, like, later in the games, they're like, yeah, Maleficent's not that important. We got to worry about Xemnas and Xehanort, which mm-hmm. that's, you find out later, that's the main bad guy. Well, Xehanort is the main bad guy of this yes. game. So there's one one bad guy and he has like 12 forms every i actually have a note about that hold on let me bring i closed my notepad because i was like checking my phone to double check on the um the the key hole things but in in this game xehanort the final boss was going to have two additional forms that they cut Already he had like 12 forms to fight as the final boss, mm-hmm. but they was going to have two additional forms and it was basically him almost as a, as a giant, like in a city and you had to fight him that way. Like a, mm-hmm. you just like stomping through, I guess the, um, what is it? The world that never was, I mm-hmm. think is where the final battle takes place mm-hmm. in this one. I know as dumb and cliche as the names in terms of a narrative sense are, I always like how they sound. Yeah, they're magical. The world that never was. It fits. It's, it's very vague, vague. And also like if it, you could, it could easily be fit into like some pretentious storytellers thing, you know, like, Oh, it was the world that never was or mm-hmm. something like that. But, and that's pretty, I think, I think Tetsuya Nomura can be a little bit pretentious with his storytelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. I, I eat it up, but, the world that never was is a little cliche, but it's, I don't know. I love that. But yeah, so he, it was going to have two different, two additional forms and they were cut for an unknown reason. Mm. Um, another fun fact, which we'll get into once we get into gameplay, but I kind of want to just talk about it now before I forget. Um, there is a, some, a, there's an additional summon that was cut for an un- unknown reason and it was Woody and Buzz. You can, mm. they actually found their 3d models, not textured, but just kind of like their the like game. little rigs cool. game in, in the game. Yeah. And, uh, some of the worlds that we go to as, like we said, he has to unlock the worlds and, you know, solve the issues like, uh, organization 13 and the heartless have done throughout each of the different worlds. And one of the new ones in kingdom hearts two is the pride lands lion King, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorites. Actually. Oh, I love it. So we didn't get to talk about the Disney aspect of it at all. So like, you're right. We've been I so know. focused on Tetsuya Nomura's <laughs> bullshit. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. So kingdom hearts like is heavily like mixture of like final fantasy with Disney huge question mark and how uh, they decided that i i know how if oh, you'd like to know go for it so i did mention this in the first episode so for those who have listened to it sorry for repeating but for driana as well as anyone else who has not heard um i got this from did you know gaming i'm not smart enough to find the research on my own they did it for me um basically what happened was that they were trying to figure out after Final Fantasy VII came out, they also saw Super Mario 64. And the people at Square were just blown away by it. They really wanted to create um, a world like Super Mario 64. And they didn't know how to do that. I mean, they could figure it out, but they were talking about it like it's going to be really difficult because we don't have a mask. We don't have a character like Mario. We don't have a character that has a big world recognition as Mario. And they were kind of musing like, well, the only other ones that we would know would be Mickey Mouse. Like, Mickey Mouse is the only person that could really stand up to Mario. Mm-hmm. Well, at the time, you know, uh, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, when the game started development, they Disney and Square shared an office in Japan. Like, Disney of mm-hmm. Japan shared the same office space. So, during an elevator ride up, they pitched it to Disney. They pitched it to Disney in the elevator in Japan. Mm-hmm. 
and Tatsuya Nomura liked it, like overheard. Not, I don't think he overheard the pitch, but he overheard basically them talking about like, oh, the only person we could get would be like, only thing big enough would be Mickey Mouse, and he just wanted in whatever it was, and that's pretty much how Kingdom Hearts was born. Wow. Right? Nice. And it was just because they pitched it to Disney and they just happened to be in the same office. So they were able to combine the two. And originally it was not going to be as heavily Final Fantasy eyes. It was going to be much more just straight Disney, but they wanted to kind of appeal to the Final Fantasy players. So mm-hmm. um actually I'm sorry, I think Mickey was going to be the main character, or like one of the Disney characters was going to be the main character within Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. But to appeal to the Final Fantasy fans and also to make it kind of stand out, they made it a Final Fantasy esque character and that's why Sora was born. Mm-hmm. But Sora, if you notice, is dressed like a Mickey Mouse in that yeah. first game. Red red shorts, mm-hmm. yellow shirt type or yellow vest. Yellow, uh yellow shoes. Yellow shoes, that's it. Yellow mm-hmm. shoes. And he kind of has like a black vest on, which is kind of like Mickey suspenders yeah. type of thing. So. And like the proportions are like way off and like cartoony. Like Final Fantasy is a little bit more like realistic and I guess, propor- I mean, unless depending on the version you play, if you play the original seven, you know, that blocky texture is not realistic. But they um, they still found time to give boob jiggle to Tifa. There you go. Uh, even on <laughs> blocky texture. But Final Fantasy is meant to be a little bit more realistic and then Sora is very cartoony and fun and bright and that's also his personality. So it fits. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the Disney aspect, like I love. I do too. It's very fun. I mean, it it does get in the way a little bit because um, like... In the beginning, it very much felt just like a fun Disney adventure with loose story. Yeah. And now they've created just a cluster F of just convoluted story that almost the Disney aspect doesn't matter. And like, I would dare say is not fun. It's not the same magic as the earlier ones. I agree. I definitely agree. I think the first, I actually like the first game the most in the series, which is weird because it has the worst controls. Yes. <laughs> uh, next to Chain of Memories, which doesn't really have, I mean, that's more of a card game, oh, so you God. can't really count We're that. We're not even going to count that. But um, the one of the biggest, but like, yeah, the first game has really awkward, stiff controls. The jumping in that game is so stiff. Mm-hmm. It, like the way Sora jumps is just so unnatural. Mm-hmm. And they kind of fixed it in the second one. But also, as you play more in the second one, you get bigger combos, and you can. It's more of a spectacle, and it's a light show, and it's pretty. So like, you, you do wield keyblades. Yeah, it's cool. So like, they improve in some areas, I'd say. Mm-hmm. But um, the the places that they don't improve, I feel like, is tying the story with the Disney aspect. I would definitely agree with that. What are some of your favorite worlds in this? Because we're so we we kind of talked about how you know in terms of the story, you know. So like I said, after Sora and Roxas get combined, what their goal is that they have to they are sent out by King Mickey and Yen and Sid, who's like not Merlin, not Merlin, but he's he he's, he's in, a wizard. He's a wizard from some of the old Disney movies. I can't remember his character's name in the old Disney movies. It's gonna bother he's me. He's not. Yen Sid is not in the old Disney movies. Yeah, he is. He's is, no, because he, I think he's a Kingdom Hearts own. Because if Yen Sid, he's in Fantasia. Is he in Fantasia? He's in Fantasia. That's what it was. I could not remember. Yen Sid backwards is Disney. That's funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I did not notice that. So what happens is that King Mickey and Yen Sid tell them to basically go out and explore the different worlds to find Riku and figure out what the Organization 13 is up to. And that is the reason for them exploring all the different worlds. Correct. So now that we kind of under now that we have that said, because I was bumbling around it earlier. What are some of your favorite worlds within this game that they explored? So in Kingdom Hearts 2, um, I did enjoy, um, like you said, the Lion King, the Pride Lands, because you get to be a cute little baby lion. He's adorable. He's so cute, but still wielding a keyblade somehow. In his mouth. It's kind of clunky. It doesn't make (laughs) sense. It looks awkward, but it doesn't make it any less fun. And well, the animation they chose for him, I thought was really fun. Like the, like it's, even though he, you know, Sora's holding the Keyblade in his teeth to fight and he's like, like just moving it back and forth like that. They kind of have him do a lot of spins and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It makes it really fun to watch. You have to, cause like, I mean, a baby cub line should not be able to wield a sword. Um, let's see other levels I enjoy. Okay. People are going to hate me. I like the little mermaid level. Mm. A lot of people hate 
hated it because it had nothing yeah. to do with fighting. Because like in Kingdom Hearts One, you go to um, Atlant- Atlantica, yeah, and um, it's it's more of a the regular system. You fight Heartless. You well, go through it's it. and it's a rhythm game in this one, right? It's yes, right? pretty much. It's a rhythm game. Yeah, I'm actually with you on that. It's not my favorite, but I it's don't different. hate that. Yeah, it's it's a nice little break in between doing the exact same thing and like. You know, maybe it's the little girliness inside me, like, ooh, songs, eee, this is fun. Well, I will say, I think it's better than the original because the mechanics of fighting in the original in Underwater. Atlantica is not fun. It's you not get good. used to it, but it's such a, it, when the, it's a, it's a, it's not a breath of fresh air. It's like getting shot in the face. Like you, you just, <laughs> you all of a sudden, all, everything's different. You go, oh, oh shit but you learn it pretty quickly mm-hmm. it's not even like a steep learning curve mm-hmm. but that and the fight in kingdom hearts one ursula mm-hmm. fuck that fight i hate that fight in the first game i mean you also fight ursula technically in atlantica in kingdom hearts 2 but it's but it's, the, it's through song it's yeah it's through a song based system da, 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 da. which i think is kind of fun because like sora sings it's like oh my god it's it's like the cheesy musical episode every sitcom does in their sixth mm-hmm. season or whatever. So that I can kind of see that. That one was fun. I'm trying to think of any other ones that just stood out to me. Um, real quick, while you're thinking, the Lion King, the Pride Lands was actually planned for Kingdom Hearts One originally. Oh, did it just not make it? It well, they wanted to, but the issue was is that they could not figure out how to animate and rig Sora as a lion. They couldn't figure out the is a, I wouldn't guess that'd be bipedal, I guess, or whatever that term is, but a four-legged creature. They couldn't figure out how to animate and rig that in time for the release. They they would have been able to, but they just ran out of time, so they, they scrapped it for that game and, you know, obviously released it for Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I like the Pride Lands. I didn't mind uh, Little Mermaid World. Little uh, Excuse me, Little Mermaid's World. I also really liked... Actually, you know what? Before I do that, one I didn't like was I didn't like Olympus. I I kind of hmm. I, I was always kind of bummed that they sent you back to Olympus again. They always send you back to Olympus for some reason. I don't it's know why they're obsessed state. with it. I don't know either. I mean, they did make it slightly more interesting because you didn't just go in the Coliseum. You went down to Hades world. Yeah. And then you met some more like Final Fantasy characters like to tie it back into the Final Fantasy and remind you like, ah, we also are Final yeah. Fantasy. Remember? And it's like, hmm. And um, you met, wasn't it Aaron? Yes. Aaron. Yep, Aaron. And yeah, it. Eh, I don't um, know. I like Mulan's world a lot. Yes. I will say probably my least favorite. My least favorite in. Hmm. I don't know. I don't like Halloween Town in almost. Really? Anywhere. No, I, I you don't, don't like, like Halloween. Sor- His design is pretty cool. I know. I think his design is cool. I just don't like the levels. I don't know mm. why. I do. I really. I don't know. If I, I like it, but I also think it's the most out of place. Port Royal, which is Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. I thought that was so out of place. It is very out of place. I will say, jumping to three a little bit when they they because they have a, a Port Royal in three. Um, that's just a big flex at how look how well we can render realistic humans now yeah so i feel like in a weird way too was that was what they were trying to do like okay we you're used to the cartoony thing we're really good at that let's try our hand at realistic models but then sora is also there and he's a very cartoony looking guy mm-hmm. so like it's a very like that just the position just doesn't work um so i didn't enjoy it at all playing it but i can see why they wanted to be like look at us look at our textures we're improving it was more like a portfolio piece than a fun i could see level. that and uh, that one also was split up into like three different places you could explore so you would like sail a ship from mm-hmm. one port to the other mm-hmm. and you'd have to go around and they they did have an interesting mechanic with the pirates that since they they stuck to the story of the pirates of the caribbean movies mm-hmm. you could only hurt the pirates in the moonlight mm-hmm. which was cool but there's not enough moonlight to make it worthwhile because, like, if you yeah. hit them into the shadows, then all of a sudden you're like, all right, I guess I got to run back out and have them chase me. Yeah. But like I said, it wasn't fun to play, but it was definitely just seemed like a, a flex a little bit. I, I would agree with that. So just I enjoyed most, if not all of them. There wasn't a whole lot that I was like, I hate this. But 
I feel like Kingdom Hearts 2 was very much like almost as if just a Disney side story, if that makes sense. Like you have the canon Disney movies that exist and Sora and Kingdom Hearts 2 is like almost like a little non-canon, like fun adventure. It doesn't necessarily have to follow the story 100%. It's kind of doing its own thing Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I feel like that was the fun part. It almost feels like almost like a fan game or fine like not quite that it's not professional just like sticking a random oc into a disney world just seems like something you'd read on the internet like a little girl 13 year old girl in her room being like i'm gonna create my own original character and he's gonna hang out with mickey mouse Woohoo! and i could i could kind of see that it definitely does that make sense i because i i think that's how i felt at first like sora feels so out of place in disney Mm -hmm. thing and Disney stuff. Expect, well, not in the first game, they did a really good job of blending the two, I think. Yes. I think they did a good job of making it feel not Disney, but at the same time, it's Disney enough. Mm-hmm. The second game, because like you were saying, they age Sora up and then he dresses a little bit differently. He and does, they're like working on the plot, but still maintaining that Disney. And it's like, well, if he's growing up, why are we still staying at this like juvenile Like, I mean, given he's a fun adventure character, like, he's the hero, he's, like, a child at heart, but, like, I don't know, he just almost doesn't fit. Do you think that maybe, so are you saying, like, they they should have picked worlds that fit Sora's age more? Maybe. That would, that's an interesting argument. Maybe. So, like, you know, like, a lot of the kid movies, like, Pirates of the Caribbean would kind of work because that's a more mature movie. Mm -hmm. Granted, like, that might be a little too high, but maybe they could have gone with some of the darker, like, 80s-themed films, like maybe. Rescuers. Yeah. Or, like, Rescuers Down Under, or... um. Because, like, even in Kingdom Hearts 1, you fought the Fantasia demon thing, which just did not make sense as little boy, 10-year-old-looking Sora fighting it did, a it demon. It was so random, too. Like, it had no... Like, you don't know what that thing is in the context of the story. It's just something it's random. It's just a demon fighting a child, and it doesn't make sense. In Kingdom Hearts 2, if he followed it, I'd be like, well, at least he's older, maybe more mature, question mark. Yeah. <laughs> question mark. Like, I don't know, maybe, like, the world should have reflected a little bit more of his growth. Okay. That's an interesting point. I never... Re- See, I it, that type of stuff never really... I think I've just always kind of accepted that it doesn't completely match up and that's kind of the charm of it for me yeah so it never really stuck out to me that way but i think there is a point to be made a valid point to be made that like maybe the world should reflect the age of the main character of the game maybe and which is like did you do did you feel the same way when you played kingdom hearts 3 yes okay it very much feels like i mean it feels like almost like an excuse that oh he's just energetic and a child at heart so it's fine that he's just hanging out with Woody and Buzz and toys and childish things, which is fine. But like that, it just sounds like an excuse. It's like you're trying to create this heavy plot where like it really matters now. Like in one, it was just like kind of a haphazard plot. Now by three, it's like, all right, we really got this plot down. Yeah, down. yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in depth. Yeah, and then he's going on a side adventure to Monsters and Inc. to just mm. do whatever. And it's like, hmm. So let me ask you this then. Do you think, are there any worlds in the Disney, that Disney could, could legally put in, that they could put in because it's a Disney property? Oh, absolutely. That you would not want to see in? Oh, not want to see in. Um, For example, I don't want to see Marvel or Star Wars. No. I don't think that fits with the aesthetic of Kingdom Hearts fit. at all. Not at all. Tetsuya Nomura has said he would love to do something with Star Wars in it. Uh, this was before, and that video was made before. they did before. do Tron. But Tron was a Disney property, and also like since it was so like have you like have you seen Tron like the no. original movie? It's the the gra- like the visuals of Tron are video gamey to begin with. Okay, so it so fits. It, it fits really well. Okay, it, it's a little it, it fits better than Pirates of the Caribbean did. Okay, for sure. And if they already put Pirates of the Caribbean, and then it's like okay, you might as well. But like Star Wars to me, I understand Disney owns it, but that's not Disney. Disney, Disney. It's not like Disney, yeah, it, Pixar. I think has been co- is like close enough to Disney. Disney, they it mm-hmm. makes sense why they co opted it into it. I mean, I know Disney owns Pixar, but like, it makes it would it Monsters Inc. and Toy Story and all those. It still feels Disney when yes. you watch those movies Correct. and it, it like and the visuals are very Disney esque, especially because now that Disney is doing three D animation for all their stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what's a world that you would want to see? Princess and the Frog. 
figured you were going to say Princess that, and the yeah. Frog. I almost seriously want to write a strongly worded letter of what is wrong with you for not putting that movie in. I still haven't seen it. I know it's a, what is wrong with you for, <laughs> for not now. seeing that movie. We have Disney Plus now, so I can watch it. I can watch it. So for those who've not seen Princess and the Frog, Princess Tiana, the first black princess, whoop whoop, uh, <laughs> she gets turned into a frog. Spoiler alert! Um, and the big baddie of that movie is a shadow man. He is called the Shadow oh, Man. You're right. That like, there's no reason that fits perfectly into Kingdom Hearts lore. And absolutely, like, that's perfect. Like, I don't want to like tell you too much of the story because I definitely want you to see it. But like, he uses shadows, some shadowy figures to he's help a, him. I know he's a voodoo type. Yeah, of guy, Yeah, he's a voodoo right? guy, so he like summons shadows to like help him do his evil deeds. And I'm like, shadows? What's a shadow? Heartless. Heartless. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like I wouldn't even be mad if like they did another Pride Lands esque level where like you Sora's also a frog or something like hopping around with the key yeah. in his mouth. Like that would look weird, but like they've done it before. Well, most likely knowing what they how they handle stuff like that where it's less of a I, that isn't because since Sora's a guy, he can't like I doubt they would put him in the shoes of a female character because they've never done that before. What do you mean? Like, well, is Tiana gets turned into a frog, yes. right? So why would he play? Why would you play as the frog if that's supposed to be Tiana? Well, I don't want to tell you because story, but oh, like, okay, okay, don't yeah, don't say yeah, anymore. Yeah, so then. so Sora could also be a frog. Donald could be a regular duck, I guess. And I don't know, Goofy could turn into a gator. They hang around in the bayou, mm-hmm. fighting heartless because that makes sense. That would be a fun world, actually. They could to and you could like. They could totally make it. I don't know. I don't know if they have it in the movie, but just thinking of bayous and swamps, you could get one of those like swamp boats. You know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. with the big fans in the back. Yep. They could easily make like a little like open world area that would be super fun to traverse with that. Or the boat can turn into a heartless and you fight the boat because that's also a theme. You fight several boats in Kingdom Hearts. You, there's a there's one of those boat ships in the Peter Pan worlds. Yep. Uh, like z- 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 uh, Ansem and one turned into a boat. <laughs> And you kill him. Yes, he did. He turned into a giant boat. And that, then in Kingdom Hearts 2, he's not quite a boat. He's actually a building. No, it is a boat. He's he's a boat and he sits on a throne and you have to fly <laughs> yeah. to him. You have to, uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, I remember counting, it's like 13 different forms or some shit like that. Pretty it much. is so many that you have to fight just, oh my God. I was, and it's all, it's, a, it's such a long finale in that game. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts 2, I think, was good because they didn't, had, like the finale was tough, but it wasn't like thirteen different forms like Kingdom Hearts. It was still a it, lot. It was on par, I would say. Given I beat that game at like two in the morning on a school night, and I borrowed it from a friend, so I was trying to get it back the next day. And like a fool, I thought there would be another save point, and then there never was. So I just had to beat the game right then and there. And it's not easy, so I'm uh, like, it's a long game. Crap! Like it was the middle of the week. It wasn't even anywhere near a weekend or a rest day for school. And yeah, so but I I did I beat it and he Zemnis is dead. Did so it, and actually I'm happy you mentioned that specifically because I wanted to kind of talk about the ending of the game. Mm-hmm. The this so one of the things I really liked about this game is it it kind of revealed a couple different plot twists. One you found out throughout the course of the game and you you figure out what Organization Thirteen is and whatnot is you find out that um, the leader of Organization Thirteen is this man named Zemnis. Uh, and Zemnis is the nobody of Xehanort. Now, up yes. until that point, you didn't know who Xehanort was, though, because you find out later that the Ansem that you fought at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1 wasn't really Ansem. He was just posing as Ansem. Correct. And it was Xehanort. It and didn't, no, he is the Heartless of Xehanort. He's the Heartless of Xehanort. Yes. So... You do figure out a little bit who Xehanort is if you collect the collectibles in Kingdom Hearts 2. There's these um, journal entries, mm-hmm. and you could read all of them. And as we said it earlier in here in the podcast, I didn't like to read when I was younger because I guess I was just lazy. And that's a lot of entries to read. Well, I mean, you were, what, in fourth grade? Uh, no, I so Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, I think, in 2007? 2005. Five? Yes, I looked it up actually. Oh, wow, sorry, I no, it. I definitely played it in middle school though. So I, was like, I mean, it doesn't mean that you played it in 05. I didn't fair. play it. I didn't. I didn't beat Kingdom Hearts two until like two years ago. I played oh. it like a while ago, but I never beat it. Yeah, so it originally came out 
in 2005 in Japan, 2006 in North America. So I played in 2007, so ish, maybe six, around that time. Um, yeah, so there's, oh God. So the main, main big baddie that they're trying to tell us is the main big baddie is Xehanort. Who is the nobody. Oh, sorry, no, Xehanort. Oh, I'm sorry. So the main bad guy is Xehanort. He's an old bald guy. Yes. <laughs> He's, I'm just going to say that. In Kingdom Hearts 2, that big baddie of just two is Xemnas. His nobody. His nobody. Yeah. So empty heart, no heart inside of him. He is an empty shell with long silver hair and brown skin. And you find out the real Ansem is Diz, who's been yes. this guy that's been kind of guiding you along. He's been your guiding force throughout Kingdom Hearts he 2. He is Ansem the Wise. So Xehanort's nobody, and oh no, I'm sorry, Heartless, is, is the boss Ansem, of the first game. The, the, the brown, long-haired, silver-haired guy with the Heartless logo on his chest. From the first game. Yes. Yes. That is, uh, that his the Heartless version of Xehanort is... Ansem, the Ansem, the final boss from the first game. He just called himself Ansem to confuse the shit out of you. Yeah, and if you got confused by that sentence in any kind of way, welcome to Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh my god. I think this is this has been a great episode just because we've delved so far into it. I know we've kind of gone all over the place, but I'm really enjoying like dissecting this because I still... Am, I feel like Kingdom Hearts is the type of thing where it's you have to create a church for it because... What like what Christians do, where they meet every Sunday and dissect the Bible. We need to meet every fucking Thursday mm -hmm. so we can dissect Tetsuya Nomura. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> and we can figure out Pretty what's happening here. Darn much. So yeah, not going too far toward three, but like yeah. So Xehanort is the main bad guy, and then in two, his nobody is the guy that you need to be for reasons. <sighs> Yeah, and that's pretty much how the game ends, and you defeat Xemnas. And, yes, you do defeat him. And you defeat Xemnas, and I believe at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, if you, I think there's like an end credits cut scene where you can see the, what kind of was like the teaser, like the, like, um, not the trailer, but like a nice pre-rendered CG thing of the mm -hmm. War of the Keyblades, which was Birth by Sleep. Yes. And which everyone thought at that time was like, ah, Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. It's like, just kidding. It's a well, prequel. Well, and they did the same thing at the end of one with like the cool battle with like, it's where you first see someone dual wielding Keyblades and he jumps down. Mm -hmm. uh, to, it was in, is in the world of, uh, oh my God, the world that never was. That and was it, technically. All, it, and would, it was just a tech demo. It had nothing to do with anything. That apparently. I would argue is a 356 over two days um they actually mentioned that on the video i saw too you're right yeah because that scene happened in that in that game okay so like i don't think they originally meant for that to be the teaser for that game it just ended up that way oh yeah i mean that's they retcon everything so many times and like like you said in the first game they tell sora he's the only keyblade master which and he's the only one who can wield it and you find out <laughs> in the pre no. and then you find out in a prequel that's supposed to set up the story of sora like there's a keyblade war and i'm like if key Sora is the only Keyblade wielder, why is there a Keyblade War? And it's not like the Keyblade War like completely abolished all Keyblades, and now Sora is the only one who can re wield one. No, like I think they completely forgot that that's how they started. That's well, they like also have Riku be able to use Sora's Keyblade in the first one, though. So I wonder if they kind of like, well, you know, he wasn't the only one who who used it in the first game, so maybe it's okay if we retcon that. I don't know, though. Well, in one, they explain that the Keyblade chooses its wielder, so, okay. like, that was their excuse. Um, but, like, they were trying to say that that was the only one. But then Mickey appeared and also had one. And in the first one, too, right? And or then no? Riku got his own, which was in the shape of a... a, a a bat wing? I don't know. I I do like the Keyblade designs. Though. That's oh, one of my, that's yes. some of my favorite aspects of the series. I love all the different looks of the Keyblade stuff. I remember Key so well in middle school. Like me, I, I'm an artist, so mm -hmm. I draw a lot. And me and my art friends would just make our own Keyblades. I actually have the original Keyblade back there. It's made out of wood. I'd have to. I'll, I can bring it out. Oh, I, nice. I, it's it's hidden behind the boxes. I don't know if you can see it. Nice, but nice. it's back there. I did. I was at the Ren Fair last year. And they, they had a stand. Someone had all these Keyblades I've from Kingdom those. Hearts. I was really surprised. Like, they had a ton. I've seen those. It was kind of cool. 
Um, okay, are there any things that we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about? That any any notes or like topics about Kingdom Hearts two that we didn't really get to? Because we talked. Oh, actually, you know what? I have one. Biggest differences in terms of gameplay between number one and number two. Um, smoothness. Yes. It is definitely smoother. Like you said earlier in one, Sora kind of just like jumps and it's kind of unnatural and it's just clunky and ugh. Just unfun. Just unfun. And if, if he does eventually learn glide, which helped. And, and then that made it fun too because you could start from somewhere real high and just kind of like, like shimmy on down. Yeah, so glide helps at one, but like just the jump button in, in general in the ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 and that's all you do. <laughs> it's not, there's no combos for it. Nope, it's just um, that one, two, three, one, two, three. I liked how there was different, like almost like special limit breaks type of things. Like you could, mm. you could use uh, depending on which one you wanted to use. You could use different forms. Different forms, yeah. The valor form, the wisdom, f- wisdom, and I forget what the third one was. There was three different ones, I believe. The blue, red, and yellow, <laughs> which is like based off of kind of what the. Um, the original game was like when you first start off and you can choose between like magic, strength, magic, strength or, like or shield or shield or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it was kind of like that. So there was a magic one, which was the blue one. The red one was Valor, which was like all off, like physical offense attack. Mm-hmm. And then I think the yellow one was more like support or something like, like that. Like defense-ish. Yeah. yeah. And then there was the hidden one, um, Anti-Sora. I don't know if I got that actually. Ooh. Is it hard to get though? It's not necessarily hard to get. It's um, It's very rare. But if you are down, like, don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure this is how it's supposed to happen. When you're down on health, you can, instead of dying, turn into basically heartless Sora. Hmm. And then you're like very buffed and like really strong for a brief time. But it's not like it gives you a full health bar of health. It just like gives you like a little notch and it's like it gives you almost a second chance at life. Okay. And it doesn't last all that long because eventually you come out of it and you go back to regular Sora. And then hopefully, like, back when you're regular Sora, you can realize I can use cure or heal. Yeah, or an item or something like that. It's like a second chance at life, pretty much. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. I will say what I... One consistent trend throughout the series that bothers me. Let me, let me just yeah, put a quick little side. You also don't fight with the Keyblade. Oh, you it's can, almost like a primal like like claws. And yeah, shit like that. He's like hunched over, and it's, it's kind of creepy. awesome. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up a picture of that. Actually, um, what what was it called? Like anti Heart- is either Shatter Sora or Anti Sora. Kingdom or we could Hearts just search Dark Sora. Anti Anti form. Holy crap! That's awesome looking. Right. That's really cool looking. It's very rare. I remember. I think I got it like on like what was it like was it Peter Pan World? It definitely wasn't Peter Pan World. That was number one. Somewhere where I was with a boat somewhere, and then, like, I just suddenly turned Maybe into, Port like... Port Royal. Probably Port Royal, and I just turned into a shadow, and I was like, what's happening? Because it wasn't, like... Because, like, in your valor and wisdom forms, you could choose that. Mm-hmm. It was one that just popped up, and I was like, did I press a secret button? That's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. Um, and back then, I didn't have the internet to be like, how did I... Well, I had the internet, but I, well, I guess wasn't smart enough to use it. Like, why did I turn into a shadow creature? Um, well, I was gonna say I think the summons were better in this game. I think the in summons, two? yeah, I think mm-hmm. the summons worked a lot more intuitively. I think they were a lot more beneficial to you. Mm-hmm. Um, one, they were fine. Like Mushu was pretty good, but I remember using summons a lot more in two than I did in one. Yes, I enjoyed my go-to summon was Tinkerbell. She, she could heal you, right? She was my baby. She w- it was a slow heal. It was just like very small. And if you died, like on a say a hard boss, Tinkerbell would die for you. Not Tink, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it made it so much easier. And I even have a distinct memory of beating Maleficent, where I think I glitched into a wall and took advantage of it. Like because like in that area there was vines on the walls. I like jumped onto the vines, which I'm pretty sure you can't or, or not supposed to do. At just, least in that fight or Yeah, something. you're supposed to like jump over Maleficent's tail and like learn like her like predictable paths. I was stuck on a vine and like got into a nice little corner where her like fireballs wouldn't hit me or her tail wouldn't hit me. I summoned Tink and if I happened to get hit by like a little nick of a f- fireball. But you could still hit her from there? Yeah. So what I would do, I would like ca- only cast magic. Okay. I wouldn't like do and a normal And it naturally attack. charges back up over time, doesn't mm-hmm. it? 
or it was a very long battle because I definitely relied on Goofy and Donald a lot to just defeat Maleficent. And and if they died, then they would just take like three minutes and they would res automatically mm-hmm. and stuff like so that. So it was very much a lazy battle. <laughs> it's kind of one of my favorites because I'm like, I'm going to take full advantage you of this. You game the system. You figure yes. out how to game the system. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Though. I I don't think I have anything like that from King Arts 2. I love it when you the, that type of stuff happens in games, when you're able to find something you're like, this wasn't supposed to be how I was... It definitely wasn't supposed to. Because when I revisited the second time, I tried telling my friends, like, oh, just jump on this vine, and, like, it's an easy battle. And, like, I almost looked like a liar because it wasn't working. And I'm like, I swear I did this last time. Crap. That's kind of funny, actually. I've never... I don't want to see if I can get the anti-form. Um, no, what I was going to say is one of the things that bothers me about the series as a whole is the secret ending cutscenes. And normally, I like that type of stuff in games. I actually, no, I definitely like that stuff, type of stuff in games. But what bothered me about it in this game specifically was that, the especially this one and Birth by Sleep, the secret ending cutscene is kind of necessary for you to know what happens in the next game Mm -hmm. or in the next segment of the series. And I'm like, that should just be something as a teaser that you don't need to know. Like maybe it's just like, you'll get an extra hint that you'll understand maybe who the next boss is or who next villain of the game is or something like that. You get a hint at who the next villain is, Mm -hmm. but like if it contains major plot points and major plot elements, it, it would be like, I forget what Birth by Sleep was. I just remember like it ended up having because who were the three people? It's Aqua, Aqua Ventus, Ventus, and, and, Terra. and Ventus. Kind of is part of Roxas and nope. some or Sora. I don't or know somehow. if you want to dive into that, but Roxas has not necessarily nothing to do with Ventus, but uh, Roxas looks like Ventus. Yes, Ventus is the original. Roxas, uh, I know it's so convoluted to explain it. Yeah, we, we don't have to explain it. Well, I'll have you back for Birth by Sleep. There we go. Because I do want to do more Kingdom Hearts stuff. I have beaten Birth by Sleep. The games that I've beaten in the Kingdom Hearts series, all right? One, two, I've watched all the cutscenes for Chain of Memories because I'm not fucking with that. I'm mm-hmm. not doing that. Uh, so one and two, Chain of Memories, Birth by Sleep. Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's a um, good start. I so feel. I started playing 358 over two. Mm-hmm. I have Dream Drop Distance, and I actually have three. I have all of the games in the series. Just got to get through them. I just got to get through them. That's it. And I will play. I'm probably going to look up Recoded just because, like, that's not. Just read it. Don't that, even watch the cutscenes. Just read it. That's what I'm thinking. Because it's uh, from what I've heard, it's that game is so light on story. It's, it's not. a waste of time. <sighs> At least with, like, uh, the DS version or the 3DS version, there's some worlds that haven't been in the other games yeah i'm not telling you which in case you know you like ah this world's different um because like you do visits like hercules world over and over and over and over again so the 3ds one had some that were like hmm this is different i did like in birth by sleep how like the worlds were there's a lot of different worlds in that Mm -hmm. one you had like snow white's world and then you had um Oh my gosh, there was others. I just also, re- you just get to play as like a different person. Yeah. And they have a different play style. Like Aqua like fights like an ice skater. Yes. She's very flowy and it was fun. I, I I think Birth by Sleep is my favorite game in the Same. series. That's what a lot of people say too. Me too. I liked Birth by Sleep a lot. Not only because I think the story was actually really well done, considering they try to it's still convoluted but in kingdom hearts levels it's pretty straightforward it, mm-hmm. it's a good balance of that convolution mm-hmm. and and uh straightforwardness um but i liked birth by sleep a lot i didn't play it on my original on my psp i played it on the hd remaster mm-hmm. of it but i i still really enjoyed it nice um so okay any final thoughts on kingdom hearts 2 before we wrap it all up two is a good staple game it's fun it's fun to play the worlds are great like it's a nice little break in the Disney story or continuation of the story and you get to play as this fun, like energetic, hyper main character, Sora. And it's just really good. Just, I uh, just got to take it with a grain of salt, like the plot, at least like if you're trying to play kingdom hearts for the plot, don't (laughs) just don't, you're not wrong. Don't play it for the fun. And just like, just the, just ride the ride enjoying disney world ex- exploring disney proper exploring disney planets like kind of interacting with disney characters mm-hmm. and i actually think the gameplay i 
still love the originals gameplay. I don't know why. I just find it so fun. Mm -hmm. Just the, it is so satisfying to just hit that attack button over and even if it's just the ha 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 thing mm -hmm. over and over again. I just find it endlessly when that, satisfying. When you get that dual wielding keyblade, it's like and he's like spinning around and shit. It's like great. especially toward the end of Kingdom Hearts Two, all the combos just feel so nice and it flows so well. And it's just like mm, Chef's Kiss, good staple game. There's a lot to say about the other ones. <laughs> I will have to have you back on for the other ones because I would love to have you back on. It would nice. be great. Um, for me, I I don't have much else to add to it. I think you've said it perfectly, and part of that's laziness, but part of it's also like I don't know what else I could add to what <laughs> the points you made. Um, so where can the people find you online? Do you have anything that you want to plug or shout shout out oh for? Gosh, um, I have so many. You can find me on Instagram at Anakotsu A N N A. K-O-T-S-U. I post a lot of cosplay or art there. I'm thinking of creating a new Instagram for just art because they're all kind of just mixed and matched right now. Mm. Um, I also have a cosplay page on Facebook. Miss Anna Cosplay. A-N-N-A -N -N -A Cosplay, which is just cosplay. And I also have a illustration Facebook, a Driana Lewis illustration. That's more for like my serious art. I have made two children's books in the past. And I'm hoping to make some more. So can they buy them anywhere? Or they is it is it just kind of? I remember you did it originally for one of your final projects in school, but I don't know. Can you buy it anywhere? So you you could a couple months ago, um, but I'm revamping my website because um, you could have just clicked the buy button and you know we we talk and handle it that way. But my website is down; it's a work in progress, putting it back up. Um, so hopefully soon you should be able to, but if you'd like, shoot me a message, I can easily, what's your website. So that I will, I mean, this won't be out until the time we're recording this. It is in July and this actually will, won't be out until September. So, oh, okay. So, so it might, if it's not up by then, that's fine. But just so that way people know where to get, yep. find it and for when it does. All right. You could go to www.dreahna. L E W I S dot com. Okay. Um, as for me, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at still loading pod on all of them. If you would like to help the show out, there are a couple ways you can do that. The easiest way for all of you is just to give it a rating and review on whichever podcasting app you're using. Uh, Apple podcasts would be the most beneficial, but whichever one you're using, it helps people find it. Uh, you can also check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash still loading pod. Even just a dollar a month will help grow the show. Uh, check out the network I'm a part of, the Podbeard Network. Uh, go to podbeardnetwork.com to check out all the podcasts there. And finally, the most important shout out and important plug I have to give is the nonprofit I'm a part of, or I'm partnered with, excuse me. Uh, it is the Bit by Bit Foundation. And the Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of children receiving inpatient care at hospitals. You can check out more at bitbybitfoundation.org and consider donating. And that should do it for this one. Thank you all for joining me for this episode of Still Loading and for this episode of the Summer of PS2. Driana, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I had fun. Uh, I did too. I want, like I said, I want to have you back on for more Kingdom Hearts stuff because you know way more shit about this than I do. So I need to have <laughs> I need to have my expert on for for when I do this. Um, so yeah, that should do it. So thank you all for listening, and I will see you all next time. Bye.